Well, hi, and welcome back to St. Thomas Aquinas for everyone. I'm Dave Palmer, and we are continuing our study of the angels according to St. Thomas Aquinas. This is the second video on the angels. The first one we talked about basically what they are. They are incorporeal, which means they have no bodies. They're pure spirit, uh, but sometimes they take on bodies. They assume bodies for generally for our benefit, right? So today we're going to uh, continue on our discussion. And again, there's going to be about five or six of these videos on the angels, and it's really very fascinating. Fascinating uh, how Thomas spends a lot of time in understanding them because, as we learned in the last one, in order to understand God better, you understand the angels because they're so close in nature to him, being pure spirit, uh, as is God, right? So let's right, move on. And Thomas now asks in uh, question 52, article 1 of the Summa, whether an angel is in a place. Now that may not have ever occurred to you, you know, because if they don't have bodies, are they here or there? Are they everywhere? You know, where are they, right? And so just to kind of give you some kind of reference uh, from our own life, whenever we think of anything, you know, if you see a snake, you know, I like to go snake hunting. I love snakes. You know, if I see a snake, clearly it's in a place, you know, a grasshopper. When we see a grasshopper or many grasshoppers, they're all in individual places. They're in, a, they're in a place, and then they may move to another place, right? So Thomas is asking, is this what happens with the angels? Do they move around? Are they, you know, what, what's, what's the deal if they don't have bodies? A kite, okay, and again, I could give you a thousand examples of this, but we know that anything that we experience that has matter, that has a physical quality of it, has to be in a place. And so here's what Thomas says, it is befitting an angel to be in a place. Yet an angel and a body are said to be in a place in quite a different sense. A body is said to be in a place in such a way that it is applied to such a place according to its contact of dimensive quality, quantity. All right, that snake was in a particular place by dimensive uh, quantity. But there is no such quantity in the angels because they don't have bodies, right? For theirs is a virtual one. Consequently, an angel is said to be in a corporeal place by op application of their angelic power in any manner, whatever, to any place. Okay? So they just, they apply their power to a place, and then they're there. Okay? So we'll get more into that in a second. For the soul is in the body as containing it, not as being contained by it. In the same way, an angel is said to be in a place which is corporeal, not as the thing contained, but as somehow containing it. Have you ever thought about that? You know, I have a soul and a body, as do you, right? Uh, and my soul is here because that's where my body is. So it's basically the soul has applied the power of the soul to this particular matter, right? But if you just take the matter away, you have an angel, and an angel can apply themselves to any location. Isn't that just so interesting? I, I just find that so fascinating. Okay, so now if they can be in a place, can they move around? And you can probably imagine based on the first answer how they move themselves around, but again, movement is part of our everyday life. We see traffic, we see cars moving, we move, we <clears throat> run around, we get exercise, right? It'd be very weird to see this woman in that position, right? You, you actually apply movement to her because we're always moving around. We are people always on the move. If you went to a farm and you saw this scene, it would be very, very odd for it to be static, right? You'd see these little piglets moving around, and the, they, you know, the mother pig doesn't tend to move very much, but it certainly would be moving somewhat, okay? So, again, these are just examples of movement. And so how do the angels move? Uh, for since the angel is in, a, is in a place only by virtual contact, as we just learned, it follows necessarily that the movement of an angel in a place is nothing else than the various contacts of various places successful, successively and not at once because an angel cannot be in several places at one time. All right, so God can be everywhere, but angels are not God, right? Even though they're pure spirit. So they have to be in one place at a time. Nor is it necessary for these contacts to be continuous. Okay, now this is really interesting. Nevertheless, in a certain kind of continuity can be found in such contacts. An angel can successively quit the divisible place in which he was before, and so his movement will be continuous. Okay, so Thomas is saying here that if an angel wants to move from here to here, it could, you know, move like that, but it would be applying itself to every, every place along the way, right? And he can all at once quit the whole place and in the same instant apply himself to the whole of another place. 
uh, and thus his movement will not be continuous. All right. So what is Thomas saying here? Right. If I wanted, I, I'm going to be, you know, going to work very soon. If I want to be to work, I got to get in my car. I got to start the engine. I drive. It takes me 15 minutes to get there. Right. Well, if I was an angel, I could just apply myself to work and I'm there. Okay. What if you want to take a flight from New York to London? Well, in our present circumstances, you got to get on a plane. You got to fly over there. It's going to take, what, five hours or so. An angel doesn't have to do that. An angel just is in a place through the application of its power, and then all of a sudden it says, hmm, I think I'd like to be in London, right? And so by the very will of it wanting to be in London, guess what? It's in London. Wouldn't that be cool? And I will tell you <clears throat> at the very end of the Summa, when we start talking about the qualities of the human person in heaven, you're going to find that that's one of the qualities. It's called agility, but that's a long ways from now, okay? All right, isn't that interesting? Well, we're going to continue on. We've got a few more lessons on the angels. Uh, be sure to comment, ask questions, start, start a little discussion if you'd like, and uh, let me know if this is making sense to you. Uh, we are still only about halfway through Prima Pars, so still a lot of the Summa to study. And again, thank you for journeying with me through the Summa. And uh, be sure to uh, like and leave comments, and let's get a little discussion going. Thank you so much. I'm Dave Palmer, and this has been St. Thomas Aquinas for Everyone.